We each have uh, an Emmaus story like the gospel today. I remember uh, one of our uh, mothers sharing uh, with me that uh, she was uh, praying in church and praying for her two sons who had left the church. Uh, and she was on her knees and out of the corner of her eye she saw her two sons walk into church and kneel down in the aisle right across from her. Of course, she was amazed, surprised, and joy-filled, of course, to tears. Turns out that uh, they received communion during the Mass, and then after Mass, uh, she had a chance to visit with them, and, and they, they shared the story of what happened uh, to them, and they, they, were, uh, they said they were both uh, in a car driving in Colorado. It was a driving rainstorm. Uh, and they could barely see, but they saw this one fellow, an older gentleman, who had a pretty serious limp, and he was soaking wet, but he looked like he was on his way somewhere. So they stopped, actually, and picked him up. And when they picked him up, they found out that he was on his way to Mass. Uh, and so they brought him to the church. And so they were sitting outside the church as the man went in, and they looked at one another and said, well, we don't have anything else to do. Let's go in. So they went in. And as they went in, uh, and the Mass began, they said something happened for them. Partly because of the man who was soaking wet in the pew, but also partly because they all of a sudden realized that Jesus was present on the altar, and it changed them. They realized the risen Lord Jesus was with them. And that's why they had come to Mass that day with their mom. You know, each of us have a, an Emmaus story. The two disciples that we, we capture in the Gospel today um, uh, you know, we're, we're believers in Jesus, but their, their faith really had been shaken significantly, especially uh, when they had witnessed the crucifixion. And I guess part of the question for us is, that Emmaus story that we have, we bring to the altar today. So we are gathered together in social media, to be with the Lord Jesus. And one of the things that was taking place for these two disciples is they were so tied up in what was going on in their lives, especially the discouragement and the, the, the uh, uh, real despair, if you will, that was going on, that even when Jesus was present to them, walking alongside of them, they didn't see him. They didn't recognize him. And so that also becomes part of the question for us as we are gathered here in this Eucharist. Are we open to Jesus being present to us? Are we open to Jesus crucified and risen from the dead speaking in our lives? And just like the Mass, as we, we gather and begin to pray together, um, Jesus began to talk to the disciples there. And it really was the moment of the word because he shared the word of God with them regarding him. And, and the same thing happens to us in this Eucharist, but in our Emmaus journey. He speaks to us very personally about what's going on in our lives and how his grace, his love is present. And he told these disciples, of course, Revealed to them all of the scriptures that pertain to him and how he had to suffer and die and rise from the dead. But even hearing that didn't wake them up yet. So that also becomes the question for us as we hear the word. Are we ready to hear the word? Do we really believe that this is the crucified and Lord Jesus Christ speaking to us in our lives very personally, looking into our hearts and saying to us, be healed, be loved, be filled 
with my light of the resurrection. And then as we continue the Eucharist in a very similar way, we come to the altar. Just as they invited him to their table in their house in Emmaus. And it is an invitation for us to allow the risen Lord Jesus to come to our table in our house, just as he comes to us now at our table, the table of the Lord in this cathedral. And just as he did for the disciples in the Last Supper, he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. It was the same action of the Last Supper that he did here in this miracle. And he does the same for us. He takes the bread, he blesses it, he breaks it, and he gives it to us. And he says to us, this is how much I love you. I give you myself. This is how much I want you to share in my life for all eternity. I give you myself. And that's what he does at this altar. And just like the two brothers and the mother who was praying for them, the two brothers came to know Jesus in the breaking of the bread, as the two disciples did in the gospel, as we are invited to also. The final piece is with the Mass. As we have received his body and blood, especially in spiritual communion, it is truly a moment for us to be sent, sent forth. We take his body and blood into the world. And the two disciples in the gospel were so much in love with Jesus at that moment, they couldn't stay home. They had to go back to the other disciples. And they were greeted, and this is the middle of the night now, everybody was up, and they were greeted with, he's appeared to Simon. He's appeared to everyone. He's alive. And they couldn't wait to tell their story, that they had seen him. That's what being sent means for us. And so as we surround the table of the Lord, let's open our hearts through the word of God to Jesus, risen from the dead, and pray that he who was crucified for us, died for us, and rose from the dead will truly feed us and give us what we need to be his witnesses and his disciples. Or were, weren't our hearts burning as he spoke to us on the road to Emmaus?